Hello, welcome back to the channel guys, I'm EVM and this is a range test and ultimately proof that you can do things in an electric car that, shall we say, other YouTubers say you can't. You see, the problem at the moment is the electric infrastructure is not good enough in most of the country, uh, especially if you can't charge at home. But when you do a long journey, I'm not too worried, and I don't mean the Tesla one, I'm on about the public charging network. There's plenty around, you can get pretty much anywhere the reliability is a lot better than it was, although not far from perfect. Um, but with just a little bit of common sense, a little bit of planning. And I know you shouldn't have to plan, but knowing what the infrastructure is like, that little bit of planning would save the hassle that other YouTubers apparently have when they do a long journey. Just to prove the point and hammer the point home, it's a, an opportunistic moment, shall we say. But essentially, I'm sat in a Renault Zoe right now, a 22 kilo hour Zoe. So it's a 2016 one, it's the original battery, it'll do about 85 miles in the real world, according to EV database, at least when it was brand new. So this isn't just a range test for the car I've just bought, that even in a car that does not rapid charge, this does not DC rapid, I can only charge, if I can find a 22 kilowatt AC point anyway, at an AC 22 kilowatt point, obviously. You're still looking at far worse than any modern EV out there. And I'm about to do 250 miles, just shy of 250 miles in a car that does 85. Um, and I'm pretty sure I will get back there with no issues at all, because I've already had a quick look and go, I'm gonna stop there, there, and there. The whole, well, I shouldn't need to plan it, so I've deliberately put myself in this position so I can highlight how bad EVs are, well, if you want to bang your head against a wall, feel free, it's your time. I'm here to just tell you that there's an easy solution of this. It's called common sense. Charging stops obviously will be uh, more than uh, it would be in, in my Tesla. In fact, I'll be able to drive all the way home with one relatively minor stop. I reckon there's going to be three in this, maybe four, because, again, when you know that the charging infrastructure is not ideal, it's not what we want it to be yet, then I'm not going to assume that they're all fully working or not in use at this time. Again, I'm not apologising for the network. I want that fixed, but ultimately... I'm going to charge, and this is a mantra I would encourage anybody to use, especially in uh, more rural areas. If you're going around Scotland, for example, in North Coast 500, charge when you can, not when you need to. Arriving at a charge point with 10% is utterly pointless because it means you have to use that charger unless there happens to be another one within a few miles. So why restrict yourself? I'm going to charge at a suitable charging point if I'm anything below 50%. I'll only have to charge a small amount of time, but if it's not working, if it's full or busy or there's a queue or whatever, then I'd just go to the next one because I've got plenty of charge left. So it does mean I'm doing shorter hops, but it also means I'm not going to ever get the, oh no, I have to wait half an hour for that guy to finish, or oh no, it's not working. So again, it shouldn't happen, but knowing this is a possibility, just plan ahead. It's, it's, it really isn't rocket surgery, is it? I wonder how many people will get the rocket surgery joke. Okay, I'll uh, see you at the first charge stop, I suppose. Kings and vagabonds, I'm cool. The very... Right, first stop I have done. Uh, 64.8 miles. I'm thinking this is basically as good as new. Well, I'm at the second stop of charging and, well, I've just driven here and plugged in because there are about six here. So again, I've stopped a bit sooner than I would, would, would be optimal, but I know I can definitely charge here, or almost certainly, because there are so many chargers and they said they were all working before I set off, which I know isn't always guaranteed, but again, it just increases your chances. It's not as practical. It's taking a petrol or diesel car, but I've just bought the car, I've got to get it back somehow. And ultimately, charging can be a hell of a lot easier with just using this. Again, no problems. There's no one here, but there are 
for charge points. Just having a look at the boats on the canal, so it's a nice little hotel sort of place. Because they all said they were online before I got here. Checked before I went, well, I checked whilst I was at the previous charge point. And uh, yeah, it, once more, it, it's straightforward. It should, again, shouldn't be like this, but it's just one of those things. For now, you have to put up with it. Believe me, I wish I could have been in the Tesla and drove straight home. Another little thing I would do is that I could leave now to get to my next planned stop, which is Nutsford Services. This is charging at 22 kilowatts, which is the same speed that Nutsford will be giving me. This is a nicer place, but ultimately, it doesn't matter whether I charge more here or there. So just pick where you want to do it. For me, I might as well do it here because I'm just having a little bit of a rest, as it were. And then when I set off, I will have to charge as long at the services. Uh, right, see you in a bit again. Well, I finally made it back. Oh, 260 miles in total in a 22 kilowatt hour car that doesn't rapid charge. It's clearly an inconvenient journey, which is why this car is designed essentially as a, a local car only. So this is an exceptional journey. The point of this is that if somebody in a, let's say, high-end electric vehicle that does well over 200 miles, has a huge battery, uh, and still manages to find disasters when it comes to the charging network. Some of it you can't avoid. It's the charging network we've got. But a lot of it you can just use your brain a little bit. That's all. A little bit of planning can avoid a world of pain. If I can do 260 miles in this with no charge issues, as in the chargers aren't working or they were you know, full, busy, then, you know, I won't say anyone can avoid it, but ultimately it's going to be a lot easier if you just think, all right, then let's not charge right at the end. Let's not wait until I'm at 10 to 20 percent and then I have to use that charging site. Let's charge at 30 percent, which gives you lots of plan B's further ahead. I guess that's, I suppose that's what you'd say. Again, the infrastructure isn't good enough. I've done videos about it. We need to get it sorted. We need to keep complaining. So if you arrive at a charger and it's not working, then by all means, complain, complain, complain. Um, and I don't mind people doing videos saying, look at this, it's not good enough. I do them. It's when people go and engineer these videos or just drive out blindly and go, oh God, look at this. This charging site is busy. It's disaster owning an electric vehicle, especially when you don't do any planning on a bank holiday weekend and it's full. You get out what you put in. If you put in nothing, then you're just opening yourself up to, uh, well, disasters. But it creates great content on the anti-EV side, I, I find. Um, so, right, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe, like, all the usual YouTube gumph. Okay. I've been on the road a long time. I'm going to go in.